We need to figure out right here. Come with it. Come with it. Yeah, we need to figure out what this time zone, how they set this time zone thing up and where this time zone even come from. The first question we need to ask is when did man start to keep time on a hourly, minutely, secondly time frame? Because I am pretty sure that there was a time when time was counted by the sun and the moon. Like, I'll see you in five moons or, you know, in six sunrises. Or, you know, <laughs> like, you know, like, I'll meet you over I like that. Like, I like that. You know, like, you know, eight moons, you know? It wasn't like three o'clock and four o'clock. It's like when the fifth moon pass, you know to be over here. So, so if you got to wait half, half a day for me, Mm. You can wait the half a day because you know I'm going to be here right after that fifth moon. Mm, but there mm. wasn't a specific time in, you know, in, like in them yeah, times. Like, 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 I'll see you, like I'll see you, I, I'll see you in three moons at uh, at three o'clock, at 3.35. You know, it wasn't that. It was just, <laughs> I see you in three, three moons. So you know to be at this tavern right here. Like, you know, like I got meet you at this tavern in three moons. So if you reach at the tavern at sunrise and me in there by sunrise, you know to just chill at the tavern till I reach. I might reach at reach at um noon when you know, when the sun is you know like center. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. But you know before the next moon you gonna see me. True. You true. Might, so it's not a specific time like three thirty, four o'clock, five o'clock. It's after the third moon, so before the, the fourth moon show up, we gonna link. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it was more. It, it even even had more. It like had more grace. Telling time had more grace to it. You know what I'm saying? Like like for example, like you said, if it's like the third sunrise, you know what I mean? Sometime after sunrise, you know, it wouldn't be like at a specific like hour so much. At least not maybe in the most ancient of times. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Until they learn to divide. Okay, okay, that's a good question. So on this time thing, because we're talking about time right here, and it's a good thing because we're in like the beginning of the semester, and this is why I want to spend more time in Bereshith, you know, like in Genesis, because there's a lot there. So what's the question like, you know, yeah, to the question, I mean, there's a lot of reasoning about this, definitely, but is this a specific question? Yeah, because... We have a, a system that's set up on minute, <laughs> second minute, hour, you know, as far as the, the time. Mm. And like I said before, I'm pretty sure there was not that structure. So by using that structure, they 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 um they implement a time zone for what we call Earth and different parts of the earth have a different time based on the zone that they put them in which is based on longitude and latitude mm, mm, mm. i think you so, say that right. when they did this and put certain times for certain zone and then you have a time where in america you know where you have spring forward and fall backward with the time so now you playing with the time. Mm, mm, mm. True, 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 so true. Now you end up where there is a time where now we spring forward. And we are in the East Coast is an hour ahead of the Caribbean and an hour ahead of Central Time. Mm. Okay, all right. Or whatever time Chicago, uh, Dallas, and them, those areas right after our time zone is in. So now, it'll be 12.30 in Houston, it'll be 12.30 in the Caribbean, but it's 1.30 in the East Coast. Mm, mm, you, you know, the East Coast is sandwiched between these two places, but it's an hour ahead. Okay, All these things make sense. I want to show one. one. These, things, these things ain't set up by nothing to have to do with no divinity. Mm, mm. This thing is set up by Canatis and Trickeries. I'm, sh I'm showing the people right here, uh, the world clock. You see how Addis Ababa and Jerusalem, even Addis Ababa, Addis Ababa and Jerusalem is on the same timeline. Like right now, as we 
reason just vibes in. It's like 8.43 a.m., right? And Jerusalem, 8.43 a.m. And then now Birmingham is 6.43 a.m. But now, now this is the point that Ross Seymour, you know, alerted me to. Now notice Kingston is 12.43 a.m. Kingston, Jamaica, you know, the Caribbean. Seattle, Washington is 10.43. That's like the West Coast, right? But now look right here at, okay, let's... Let me go to this one again. It kind of switch up for a moment. Let me just, let me go out of this and come back in it. I want to show ones and ones here how Houston, right? How Houston, you see Houston, 12.43 a.m. Houston, you know, Houston, Texas. And then Kingston is 12.43. So how can both of them be 12, or now 12.44 a.m.? This is what the brother mentioned because when you look at where they are, are so-called located, on the map, you know, let's look at a map right here. When we look at where they're supposed to be located on the map, they're not even in the same, they're almost like not even in the same zone. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then Hello. we sandwiched over here at the present time is it's 144. You know what I'm saying? Over. Yeah. And and you said something when you first brought it out and, and, and we reasoned on you said what a we live in a beast. How you said that? We live in a a beast system. A beast. I, I thought I heard a beast of a system, but I like that too. Yeah, a, a beast. beast yeah. a, a beast, beast system. Of, yeah, a beast system. <laughs> the, whole, the, the whole system is designed by the beast. Um, but that's what it is. You know, even on that level of beast, why prophetically kingdoms, like we look at Daniel describes like different like kind of like um, animals. And then we have some description of it as different kind of metals. You know what I mean, like animals and metals, but it is a beast. This this system is, is a, is a beast because you know how we use animal types from ancient time. But just Miami, because you're in Florida, right? And Florida, yeah. we're on the same time. We're up in New York. So when you look at just a map of the East Coast, and you see Kingston, Kingston is a little is is like a little bit of ways from the same line. If you draw a line, right? It's like Kingston and Baltimore. Get this, are on the same line. Now, what time is it in Baltimore? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Baltimore is probably the same time because this is this is the East Coast, right? The whole East Coast, yeah. The yeah. East Coast at one day. But that, I mean, Baltimore in the north, get this, the north and south difference. Well, well, well the north and what that the equator, because the Caribbean is like the equator, right? It's like along the equatorial kind of region. Notice, yeah, when they show you the time zones, they have the time zones break down in longitudes. You know, so it's, you know, it's, so the way they have it break down, they show you though they have these lines on the map where it's, you know, latitude, longitude, going one way, going the other way, and it's break down so you can so you can see how they have the zones separated. Mm, mm, mm. Well. Well, let's introduce something right here, 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 just, just along this line, just to keep it, keep it kind of grounded right here. Let's just introduce this right here. Let's see if we have this right here. Let's go over here. Let's go right here. Let, let's go to the scripts, times, laws, and times. Yeah, laws and times. No, 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 no. Times and laws. Yes. You know how like, we say Ham, Shem, and Japheth, but the scripture says Shem, Ham, and Japheth. I, yeah. I point that out because then people debate like who is older, blah, 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 so forth and so on. But times and laws. So times and and laws. I'll put it in the plural sense. And it's one verse. is Daniel 7, 2, 5. It says, And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and thing to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. So the reason that I bring it forward right here <laughs> is about time. You know, this whole thing about time, and it's interesting. I don't know if the eye caught it, but um, oh, let me just share this right here because um, Ishti, Isha Shali, she brought me this right here, and it's... um. It's, it's, it's a search she was doing as she was over here in I-9 I Reason. It says, how many states are in more than one time zone? From some plansponsor.com. Here, it says Florida, Michigan, Indiana, Kentucky, and Tennessee are split 
are split between oh. Eastern and Central time zones. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, and let me go into the article just a, a little bit right here. Are split. So this is something as you mentioned. This is something that man, that that man does. It's, it's, it's no divine, no no real divinity. It's not it's not nature, you know, and it's not like God, as one would say. You know what I mean? But it's men and people playing God. You know what I mean? It's men yeah, and people right. playing God because it goes over here. It says Nebraska, Kansas, Texas, North and South Dakota are divided between Central and Mountain time zones. So. You know, I almost forgot about that, that there's a mountain time zone. You know what I'm saying? Mountain time zone. Alaska is split between Alaska time zone and Hawaii, a Louis, a Lucian, a Lucian time zone. So, you know what I mean? Just on the time thing. So, Daniel, I think, puts it into context. So, you just mentioned something earlier about um, something only being, there's some idea only being like uh, 100 and... Oh, we're talking about the earth, we're talking about the shape of the earth and how the earth looks based on the documentary that you shared with I. Um, just name the documentary again, the, the name of the documentary that documents about the earth. The Lost Book of the Earth. The, earth. Lo the Lost Books plural. of the Earth. Earth, plural, earths. Earths, more than one earths. And even yeah. the whole word earth, who's reasoning a little before about like, you know, in the Bible when it says earth, in the Hebrew and the other languages, the other holy languages like the Amharic, the Royal Amharic, the Gittas, the same word for earth can be the word for land in many, you know what I mean? So it could be translated as like when there's a little flood on the earth, right? We can also see that as a flood right on the land. You know what I mean? Just bringing into mind that maybe it's not quite as we heard, you know what I mean? Or as we were led to believe. It doesn't take away from the truth of the matter, but it actually adds clarity. You know what I mean? To the interpretation. You know, when you said about like make sense, I was looking up earlier in a couple of different languages, like well, the Hebrew and in the Amharic, how to say like something makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. And in Amharic, the idea of sense is turgum. It uses the, 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 the word turgum. You know, turgum means it's like it's like the Hebrew targum. It's like interpretation to interpret. So in the Ethiopic sense, to say like you know make this you know make sense, you know um, you know yehin yehin targum you know you, you know yadergo or yadergut you know yadergut like make this interpret like interpret this. It's almost like saying like to 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 make this an interpretation, the idea of something making sense. You know, like when you try to figure out something, what you're trying to do is interpret, you know, what you're getting. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Put it together in some way. So you're saying that, what happened? Wait, no, 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 no. Hold on for a moment. You know, this don't make sense because, you know what I mean? You're trying to give it an interpretation so you can understand it. You know, so the whole idea of the earth being a ball, you know, is I think you mentioned from what you had saw in the in the documentary, roughly like. What what a thousand fifteen hundred years, something like like w w was that the correct or roughly a general number? Yeah, something I think is I think it's somewhere around there, but it's not more than the idea of the, the earth being round is not is not something that was um, widely accepted until about fifteen hundred years ago. That's but, but, interesting. Like, um, like if I remember correctly. That's interesting because I came across some pages. I don't know if I have it right here, but it was talking about, um, you know, oh, here it goes. I do have it. I do have it right here. This is talking about, must be, must have known that we would have this reasoning, right, about how ancient peoples conceived of the earth. You know, you've probably seen this, this set of meme out, out there. It has like the Mayan, how the Mayan conceived of the, of the earth almost in the... What ones might call, I wouldn't really call it flat earth so much, but a different perspective of the earth. But but like the earth as a plane, you know what I mean? Not as the yeah, ball. Right. Like the, the the globe would have been the heavens. Like I often like to say that the globe is the heavens. So the way I see it, right, is like the heavens are spinning around this earthly plane. You know, you know what the heavens is what's moving. You know, the stars and the heavens and the constellations 
are moving. Not so much like people nowadays, since 1,500 years ago, think that the earth is spinning. You know what I mean? Because for for the life of them, <laughs> I'm not going to say the life of me, but for the life of them, when I see the sun at certain times, you know, with my own eyes in this earthly plane, I see it in this, it's like the sun is in this space. You know what I'm saying? Now, the sun is 93 million miles away. It's outside the space, you know what I mean? As a ball of light, fire, whatnot. And it's when it doesn't appear to be moving in this space as though it is 93 million miles away. You, you know what I'm saying? I think even the ancient Egyptians, they also conceived of the earth in a similar way. So it has different ancient cultures, the Mayan, Navajo, the Inca, the Norse up in the north, the Celtic people, the Chinese, the Egyptian, the Hebrew, and the Hindu people, you know what I mean? People of all those different say, cultures and, 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 and ways, you know what I'm saying? They all had a similar conception, you know what I mean, of how the earth was. Even if we say it's just a subjective, when I say subjective from like we're looking from our own perspective, you know what I mean, at the yeah. object of everything. It still makes more sense, you know what I mean, from our observation. I'm not talking about the mathematics, because they always get people to mathematics, like Copernicus. Copernicus is one who they attribute this, this um, heliocentric. The heliocentric would be like the sun is the center, right? While ancient people view the earth as being the center. In yeah. fact, if we're on the earth, not on the sun, we should view it as though the earth is, it's like there's something bad or wrong to think that we are the center of our own universe. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 for us to think that we're the center, you know, of our own universe. Like, like, like the like the word says, "Love your brother like you love yourself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself." Notice that right there. It didn't say, "Love your neighbor like he want to be loved or like she want to be loved." You know what I'm saying? It says, "Love your neighbor as you love yourself." Now, that always means that if a person don't love themselves, they're not going to be able to express much love to their neighbor, even if they intended to. But it means that still we're centering, like how we center, from what center. It's like people have lost their center, you know, like lost their gravity, lost their center. If we're thinking like some star way out there is the center of everything, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? And even the, the thing is too, mm -hmm. the, with the globe perspective, with the globe, globe philosophy, the global, the global philosophy, they, you grew up in school from elementary growing up and they put it in your head or you get it in your head somehow that when the sun is on this side of the world, the moon is on the other side of the world. And when the moon is on this side of the world, the sun is on the other side of the world. That is what they they put in your head. Mm, right? You, you're touching on something. Go, go through, go through. Yeah. So, when they put that in your head, right? And you going to school as a child, right? And you amongst your friends them, right? And you look up in the sky one day, right? And you see the sun and the moon at the same time. And you don't have to turn your head to see them. You just look straight up and they look in your peripheral. You see the sun and the moon at the same time in the sky. But they tell you the moon there on one side and the sun there on one side. So what are you telling me right now? Mm. People on the other side of the wall, you got the sun, the moon. Mm, that's interesting. That's you say that. That's interesting because even to be to be right and accurate, even some of the people who promote the so-called flat Earth philosophy, some of them are also off too. You know what I'm saying? Even yes. though they're giving a view that the ancients knew was true. They kind of add their own biases. Like, for example, I was seeing some memes out there where people were trying to say, oh, I could debunk the flat earth with the flat earth. And they use some of these um, these kind of um, examples, you know, these, these, these CGIF examples that they do on the computer or whatever. Well, then notice that they always show, like, like on, even on the flat earth so-called models, they always show the sun and the moon as though they are forever opposite. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like whenever yes. you see them like going so called as they be going around the earthly plane, one is way over here and one is way over there. But as you told me the other I think a couple of um Shibuas ago, a couple of strongs ago, you mentioned you said that you said that when you looked up, 
you know, on this day, it was after the storm, the storm that had hit Florida and everything. Yeah. I think Ivan or something like that, whatever they, they called it. You, you looked up and you saw the sun and the moon. <laughs> I, I've been showing it to my neighbor. I tell her, look up. She said, what? I said, look, the sun and the moon and the sky at the same time. <laughs> Because on one meme I read, they said that that it's impossible to have a solar eclipse. They were saying, right on the flat Earth model. But then the example they was using in this particular meme that somebody had did, the example they was using was one of the faulty kind of Earth um, flat Earth models that make you believe, like you said, the sun is on one side of the Earth, and the moon is on the other side of the Earth. You know what I'm saying? It, almost like when the when the sun is over here, the moon got to be over there. But then what we know is that both the sun and the moon they they orbit, you know, they circle the earthly plane at a different. Like for example, Judaically, Hebraically, we talked about this year. Right, right this year, the New Year's was um, the, the September 11th. The solar is generally, you know, more kind of consistent, more rigid. You know what I mean? The solar, the, like 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 the solar calendar is more like it might be off maybe by a day, but it's it, it, it just moves maybe a day, like a leap year or something like that. But the moon moves at a different rate. So every, from a Hebrew perspective, the new year, we have to kind of look out for it. It's not always around the same day. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes yeah. I notice, like this year, I noticed that September 11th was the solar calendar, Ethiopian New Year, the Addis Ahmed, right? And then um, the Rosh Hashanah, Right, according to the lunar calendar, it was like two weeks later, and I've been noticing since we've been observing it over the um, over the years. You know, I noticed that usually there'll be like two weeks, uh, two weeks. It's like it could be two weeks earlier than September 11th, or so roughly two weeks after. But then there are certain times that they kind of they join up. You know, like where the solar new year, and that means the sun has made its complete kind of orbit. And done this, done this complete cipher, you know what I mean? And the moon has done her complete or its complete cipher too. And we notice is that that the moon is like a little bit slower, you know what I mean? In a sense, you know what I mean? Than the sun. But what I'm trying to say is that even from the observation of the new year, the solar new year and the lunar new year, sometime it might be two weeks earlier, like the, the, the moon might be two weeks earlier, the, the Jewish Hebrew or two weeks later. But also in the cycle, they would sometimes be right on top of each other. I remember we witnessed it about a couple of times since we got into the yeshiva and the Torah studies, you know, where it was like maybe a day apart or one would be the day before the next. You know what I'm saying? So that means that the, that when these things are when when these when these heavenly bodies, the sun and the moon are are orbiting, doing their you know doing their psych their ciphers, that sometimes they will come together. You know what I'm saying? But you pointed out something because I was looking at these models. And I said, why do they always have the sun on one side and the moon on the next side? Like they, like when they're moving around, they never are never close by. You know what I'm saying? That they're never close by because that is part of the global. That's a part of the Balaam. I call it. I, I, I call it a global, globalim. You know, like Balaam were like the false gods that the Israelites and others used to. You know, you know the gods of other people. Baal, Baal. You know what I mean? <laughs> I look at that as, you know, just me personally look at that as them trying to convince people this, that we're spinning. Even though we don't have any proof of it. You know what I'm saying? Even though we don't have no, when I say proof, we don't feel it. We don't, you know, we don't, there's no proof from our vantage point. They tell us based on science or based on their interpretation of science. But like we say, see if this makes sense. You know, see if this makes sense. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah. So on the on the time, the time, they shall think to change laws and times. Now, when with the Bereshi, it's a good thing we're at the beginning of the year, right? And this year we went into a lot much more of the detail. There's a part here that I think you'll be interested in since you're speaking about time, right? Is It was asking about like, you know, day and night based on the biblical. Now, based on the biblical, day would begin in the evening. You know, based on the biblical, they would begin in the evening. And and our second vice president, you know, he'll up to Ida, I call her Hebraically Ida, 
you know, one of the names of the Queen of Sheba, Hitamadia, second vice president. She made a she 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 hit me up on on the WhatsApp and asked me a question. And I said, she said, do should I make this as a proposal? And I thought it was such a great proposal. She was saying that when we have our holidays, like say like for like Mescal or you know or 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 even the the Earth Day or Coronation Day, should we celebrate it like the evening before? I don't know where she picked up on this. But I know that it's one of the things that we've been speaking about for years since we became wise. The fact that, for example, if the Ethiopians observe the, the three Magi, or as they would call it today, Lydet, when Christ was born on January 7th, right? Why is the holiest time the 6th? In other words, they still observe the 7th, but they usually would go like to whether the church or like observe it like in a holy way. You know what I mean? Yeah. On the evening before. You know, it's always the eve. It's like, why do we say Shabbat Shalom on Friday evening? And we say that the Sabbath, when the evening comes in, like when the sunlight down, I don't call it like sunrise. I call it sunlight rise. If I'm going into, hmm? if I'm going into, yeah. before you enter, you know, it's the, you know, but it's like, ba- the, like when you're approaching the door, you know. Yeah, yeah but it's based on, on the very first book and the very first chapter. Evening and morning was one day. You know what I mean? And it was evening. So, for example, right now, if this is the eve, right? Say, say they, they call this, okay, Babylon calls this like Wednesday morning, right? Yeah. But it's really nighttime. It's really nighttime. You know, that whole idea of the 24-hour day is, is, is wrong biblically, is wrong scripturally. Because according to the Bible, even those who say they believe in Jesus or Jesus or Yeshua, right? He says, know ye not that there are 12 hours in a day. So that means correspondingly, there will be roughly about 12 hours in the night. You know what I mean? But yeah. day is distinguished. In other words, day is not called night. Night is not called day. But it says the evening and the morning. If you notice that in Genesis chapter 1, you know what's not really mentioned? If I'm correct. Is the word night mentioned? When when do we get the word night mentioned? You know what I mean? In the scriptures. And we're talking about times and laws. Because they already tell us that, like, right now, the clocks well, change. When it created the moon? Okay, here we got it's it right the here. First the first mention. The, oh, okay, no, no, the first mention of night is Genesis 1 and 5, where it says Elohim called the light day. The light was called day. Right? Yeah. And darkness, he called night. And then it says, and the evening and morning were the first day. Now notice this, the evening and morning. So so the evening, okay, we work all day, right? We come home in the evening, right? So that means technically, according to this, this is the beginning of the new day, the evening. But then after the evening comes in, then we get this darkness. But the darkness is not really counted. But then the morning is the day. You know what I'm saying? And then when we think about the light hours, there it's roughly 12 hours a day. You know, roughly. But here's the thing I wanted to share with the eye. I was looking at these notes right here. And this was crazy. When I was reading over the notes, I was going over it on the air. And, okay, here we go. It's question 10 and it's question 12 right here from the previous uh, Torah, Torah, the, the first, Bereshit, like in beginning, or they say in the beginning. It, it says, what does the Hebrew word yom, the word yom mean? Now, it's interesting because in Gutters, that's how you say day too, yom, yom, you know, yom, yom, day, day, you know, day by day, right? What does it mean? In Genesis 1 and 5, right, in Genesis 1 and 5, so it says in general, yom, the word for day, can refer to the period of light, as contrasted with the period of darkness and therefore is relational to the measure of the extent of sunlight and its relative position, like the daylight. The word, they say, can also refer to a 24-hour, right, to the to a 24-hour solar day. But now, my question is, could he say a solar day that includes both evening and morning? And they point to Genesis 1 and 5. But I have this thing against this 24-hour thing. I understand 24 hours military time. 24 hours looking at it from God time. You know what I'm saying? Like the heavenly angels. 
you know, the heavenly angels, like if they be, they would exist on like, they can operate on 24 hours because they're outside of it. You know, like the, you could see the wheel and the wheel keep moving around. You know what I mean? From that right. perspective. But, but for us, in our perspective, it's almost like when it says fallen, you, you fall from your, your estate, like they fell from their estate. Our estate is on this earth. So our vantage point, we should interpret it from if, it, if, the, if the day is the light part, then how many hours are in the day? So the 24 hour thing is part of the changing laws and time or times and laws, the 24 hour thing, because they say an hour, the Sha'ah in the Hebrew Sha'ah or in the Amharic Sa'at, we say Sa'at in the, in the Ethiopic for hour, Sa'at, Sa'atu, the hour, Hebrew Sha'ah is calculated by taking the total time, right, of daylight taking the total time, right, an hour. Now, how do they count an hour? Ch hear this. An hour is calculated by taking the total time of daylight from sunlight rise to sunlight set of a particular day and dividing it into 12 equal parts. This is called the Sha'a Zamanit, or a proportional, now get this, a proportional hour. Since the duration of daylight varies according to seasons of the year. A proportionate hour will therefore vary by season. For example, if sun, if the sun light rises at 4.30 a.m. and sets at 7.30 p.m., the total time of daylight is 15 hours. <laughs> 15 hours is 60 minutes is 900 which is divided by 12, that yields a proportional hour of 75 minutes. So the sixth hour of the day, therefore, begins 450 minutes after sunlight rise or about 1130 in the morning. In other words, if one now looks at it and does, you know, if we do math on it. That's very interesting. That's very, very interesting. So, so when we think about it, if, 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 if it changes in different seasons, what are we really saying? You know what I'm saying? You know, like, like if it changes in different seasons, what in the world, like, like come from this globe perspective, right? The globe lie says that we're spinning at a thousand miles per hour, that we're flying through space at 66,000 miles per hour, and that we're upside down and right side up. And that we're in an endless universe and that the sun is 92 million miles away and is nuclear and that the moon is 250,000 miles away and can be landed on. I thought it was light, but they say it can be landed on. The atmosphere is stuck to Earth as it spins. The atmosphere, you know, I, we know we, we, since we're spinning at a thousand miles per hour and as we spin at a thousand miles per hour we're flying through space they say at 66,000 miles per hour make that make sense right the atmosphere is stuck to the earth as it spins there are billions of earth-like planets they tell us they get, haven't given us a good picture of one of them but the sun is the same as the stars they say right the stars are trillions to quadrillions of miles away that's what they say but, but notice that when it got on the moon, we couldn't see one star. You know, We could be struck at any minute or moment by a meteor, right? And that we are accidental. This tells us basically the, the whole thing is that we are accidental and a product of stardust and that we are a product of evolution, you know, a Big Bang sort of evolution. Basically, what this is is emanation philosophy, because it takes away that dignity. Because we know that we're created in the image after the likeness of a supreme intelligence, a supreme power, the almighty power. That gives us a different view than if we think that we just came along by accidental stuff flying around. You know, things were spinning around and, you know, without no order, without no rhyme and reason. And then all of a sudden, everything without any intelligence, without any divine creator, just was flying around and just came to order and started an orderly process. You know what I'm saying? Wow. That from chaos, chaos just organized itself. Isn't that something? Isn't that amazing? But yet we see chaotic things can't organize themselves. In other words, they tell us that chaos was there in the beginning and that organized itself, you know, into, you know, the, you know, the orderliness that we can observe, you know, of the heavens and earth and everything.
right? But there was chaos in the beginning. So, so it was almost by accident that things came to order. <laughs> but then when, when, when accidents happen on earth, there's no order to them. It's out of order. That, that's, the, that's the whole point of it being an accident. <laughs> They keep people too much in the sky. That's the problem. Look up. <laughs> but the thing is, it's a so in heaven, so on earth, right? Mm. So you don't need to wonder what's going on up there. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I have to say this that year, um, you know, my youth that hopefully becoming reacquainted with, he, he sent me something. He sent me something. It was a whole thing about, you know, the scripture about what you bind on on earth, you bind in heaven. He sent me um, Matthew 16 and 19, and I will give to thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That reminds me of something that I, I, I come to the conclusion of that even these things that seem like you know, orbs and lights and so-called extraterrestrials, you know, really don't come from, uh, you know, don't come from outside. They actually come from the earth. They come from the waters. In fact, that's... Yeah, you explain what extraterrestrial actually means. So. Oh, that's a mountain. That's, that's, that. The extraterrestrials are mountains. Celestials, yeah. They're these alleged celestials, these orbs flying around that they tell us is extraterrestrials, they actually come from the earth. I mean, they come from the ocean. Because think about it, according to the scriptural view of things, everything is water. It's like water seems to be the fundamental common denominator of the universe. And nowhere in the scripture do we directly see him saying, let there be water. You notice that? He said, let there be many things. You know what I'm saying? But, not, always been there. but that's why I said, Bereshith means Reshith is wisdom. That we find in Proverbs is she, Mother Wisdom, that Yeshua tells us of. So when it says in the beginning, the more correct interpretation of that from the Hebrew is in wisdom. So wisdom truly was like was like a womb. You know what I mean? Became like a womb for everything else to exist with it. And and what's in the womb? That amni uh, amniotic fluid, right? Yeah. Isn't it that fluid that's in the womb? That's what's in the womb right there. You know, so when I saw this right here, I just share that with the eye, like if one now gets into this, like talk about proportional hour. So this whole 12 equal parts, I don't know where that originated from. I'm still studying. Uh, maybe I'll find out, you know, this because Yeshua says, Yesus Crystal says, he says that they are, know ye not that there are 12 hours in a day. And that's an interesting, that's an interesting thing because we know most clocks, are set up like that military time you know 12 hours you know and then the other 12 hours is supposed to be for the night time you know what i mean but notice how it says evening like you said i think you said it well when you said that it's like when you're approaching something the evening you know that evening you know the evening and morning so where the evening technically according to the scripture is connected with the day to come so when we're in the evening of the day the day really has ended when the sunlight is down, according to the time of the of the scripture, that day has ended, you know, and yeah. one of the only cultures that keep that same sort of time, you know, is Ethiopia. You know what I'm saying? It's interesting that Ethiopia still keeps biblical time. You know, like when you're reading in the Bible, it's the New Testament and it says, oh, it was the it was the ninth hour of the day. It was the third hour of the day. It was the sixth hour of the day. You know what I'm saying? Ethiopia still keeps that relation where it's like like 7 a.m., you know, like 7 a.m., which is usually cued to be like when, you know, like the like like, like morning, like like the, like dawning and everything. That will be the one o'clock hour. So for Ethiopia time, 7 a.m. is like one. Right. And then if you count 7 a.m. is one. Right. So when you get to nine, what we call nine a.m., that's the third hour of the day. That's the biblical time. So when you're seeing in the Bible it says the third hour of the day, the third hour of the day would be what we call nine o'clock. You know, I, I just thought it was very interesting just to see that, you know, like Ethiopia still keeps that kind of biblical time. 
and when they have like a holy day, say if the holy day is like if the holy day is tomorrow, that means that that preparation and the beginning of it, getting like one's mind, heart and mind ready for it, will begin like with the Sabbath, where it begins from that Friday evening. You know what I'm saying? The preparation, yes. so forth and so on. You know what I mean? The preparation, like prepare food or whatever it is, you know, or word, sound, heart and mind. It's just a, it's very, very interesting. But this part I want to share with the eye is it's the next question about the 24 hour day. Right. This whole thing about this 24 hour day. Right. The question goes like this right here. OK. Uh, so when does a day, a yom begin, according to the scripture, according to the Torah, it repeats the formula. It was evening and it was morning one day. So that's the formula right there. It was evening. It was morning one day. Right. Therefore, day follows night. Day follows night. Hence, we start the Sabbath and festivals and holy days. Right. At sunlight set, like sunlight down when, you know, sunset, so-called. I call it sunlight set of the night before. The well, that's a natural order. Natural order. The the net nature nature of L. Nature of L order. The fact that light was created or separated out of darkness, this implies that day follows night and not the other way around. So you see, we have been taught in change of times and laws that we've been taught the other way around. We've been taught that night follows day. But actually, day follows night. Now, now, just to even think about that for a moment, right? And to say, wait, wait, wait. If this is so, right? Then the most difficult aspect is to see it the way it really should be seen. You know what I mean? Because we still see it as, 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 as the night, you know, as the night um, following the day. Instead of as the day following the night, so we we see it in the artificial, like you said, if that's a natural order, evening and morning. If that's a natural order, yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? So that means that people who can think the way that that the Most High created us to think, and in the right time, our whole way of looking at things would change. I'm saying this because I'm desirous to try to think this way more and more, so I can see it that way. Because see. When it talks about that they would change times and laws, that might seem like, you know, that if you don't know any better, well, so what, right? Somebody could say, so what? But think, just by changing time, like we're talking about what time it is in Kingston, Jamaica, right? And Kingston, Jamaica is over here. And then it's the same time in Houston, Texas. What? And then up north, as you go up north, right? We go west from Jamaica, Right. And the time is the same. But we go north <laughs> to North America and the time is different. <laughs> That's not that natural. Be, That's not natural. No, it don't make no, this is, that thing don't, that, that don't make no sense to me because before you start to relax the time zones of different places is when you riddle it off is when it kicks my head. And I said, oh, wait a minute. That don't make no sense. You got Houston, Texas, and Jamaica the same time. And on the east coast of America, our head of both of them. Mm, yep, yep. And now you're supposed to calculate times for every other zone going in each direction. Mm, mm, mm hmm. Mm hmm. And if there is a scientific reason why they do it, it would basically could also imply that the earth is not quite as they have made us believe. You see what I'm saying? You know, as they now, make us believe. When you're going west, right? Mm -hmm. When you're going west, the number decreases. When you're going east, the number in increase. Hmm. Why is that? So, Except for here, where, where we have this time zone change twice a year, like a year, where now we in the 
the, uh, the spring forward time to make the East Coast one hour ahead of Houston, Texas, and Jamaica. But now when you start to go to the West, the time start to go down and down and down and down. Mm. So it's less. So it's, it's, so, it's, so, it's, so it's earlier in the day going West. Mm. But when you go the other way, it goes up because now it's later in the East. Hmm. Is that, it's, it's, you, you it's that, does that have anything to do with the movement of the, the sun in the firmament? I wonder, like, you know, because the movement of the sun is said to be and be recorded, at least we witness it moving from east to west. These are things that I wonder. Yeah, and I wonder like 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 there's there's a big ocean between like say the east coast and the furthest um inhabitable place until you go to the yeah, yeah there's a big ocean. You know I'm what I mean? Outside. On both sides, on both sides, definitely on both sides. It's a big ocean. But the ancients, it's interesting how the ancients, even ancient Egypt, they viewed the sun as being like on a boat, right? And it was sailing through the heavens. So that means if they view the sun, you know, the sun, you know, the ball, you know, the circle, the ball as being like on a boat, that the sun was riding on a boat, from east to west you know what i mean yeah. and when it went to the, the 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 west so so even their view was not like it was going around a ball they didn't imply that it was going around a ball so much you know like yeah. that the because earth a, a boat just by the bench and then a boat you have to picture the water ah and then when they talk about new, I don't know if you ever seen this picture where there's like a man laying down. It's like from ancient Egyptian like art. It's like a man laying down, and there's like a woman who is like doing an arc above him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you talking about. Yeah. So they say like the sun. How they also show it in ancient Kemet, like the sun will like kind of like go in her mouth, you know, like with the stars. You yeah. know what I mean? And it will come out of her like womb. You know what I mean? <laughs> in a sense, like. Yeah, <laughs> Exactly, you yeah, be going through, you be going through like the firmament. But even there, the one laying down, they call him Geb. Some call him Keb or Geb, right? And he is the earth, and he's laying down. You see what I'm saying? If you notice, so if he represents the earth, then why is he laying down? He could he could be balled up or something like that to show that he's a ball, that the earth is a ball. But he's always shown as laying down. And, but the heavens is shown as an arc. You know, as the heavens is shown as as an arc, you know, or even we could say like in a more of a global, like it has that, you know what I mean? If you notice this too, at nighttime, when you look up at the sky, you can't see that arc anymore. It's not kind of clear. But when the sun comes around, right? It's like, there seems to be like an arc. You know what I mean? It's like It's like the sun creates its own atmosphere. Have you noticed that? Yeah, it does. And I'm thinking if the sun creates its own atmosphere, right? Like, like when the sun, so-called, when the sunlight goes down and then the nighttime comes in, it's almost like the nighttime sky is open. But the sun kind of creates this kind of like a, a arc where it's like, um, it, it, it's mystical. There's more to it. It reminds me of Enoch. You remember how, how Enoch was talking about things? <laughs> I'm just thinking of Enoch myself when we're talking about this guy thinking about them portals. Yeah, um, because I, I do believe that there are portals. And this is the thing I know, learned about NASA. That NASA, like when NASA be up there in this, which come, they be going like from like north to south, back and forth. So like, for example, if the sun is coming through, they have to move out of the out of the range of the sun so either they go like to the north you know what i mean you know or they go to the south i guess it depends on the season too you know depending on what season you know the sun is moving like almost like a needle on a racket but they move out the way why because they say that the sun has a lot of electromagnetic you know what i mean 
and yeah, yeah. and it can mess up. You know, they have to kind of get out the way of it because they never really show like they. It's kind of electric. The sun is very electric. And we'll short them out. Probably short out there. They probably have experienced that. You know what I mean? They probably they just don't talk about it. They probably experienced, you know, trial and error. You know? But I was watching something. They was talking about how, like, I was like, like, where is the space station? I want to know where is the space station when the sun is around? Because the space station always seems, whenever we see pictures, it's always like they're in the shadow part. They're like at night. You know what I'm saying? Have you noticed... Whenever they show yeah, pictures, that. they're always at the night or the sun is on the far side. It's like it's like it's like it's just beginning to dawn. You know, like when they see the sun, like when it's dawning, they can show a picture if this is actual picture of them up there in the lower atmosphere, what they call space, but the lower lower space. They're in lower space, the lower atmosphere. But they don't continue the shot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like they take a picture and say, All right, we're gonna have to hustle, get out the way. You know, <laughs> and from our Earth view, the sun appears as though it's right here in the atmosphere. It does not appear like something that is 93 million miles away. Not in certain times of year when the sun is setting, you almost feel like you could touch it. Yeah, it's right there. It's not 93 million miles away. It's just at the horizon. You know the horizon. You know what's interesting? I understand why the ancient peoples and many different ancient peoples, you know, in the scripture, in the Bible, they say Akhenaten and others. Why they kind of praise the creation? You know the amazingness of creation, because as they being a little freer in nature than we are in Babylon, you know what I mean? They were able to observe things that were just truly wonderful. You know what I mean? That was you know like and and that's what's lost. By them trying to act like, well, they've circumnavigated the universe. You know, they know everything, but they can't show us a picture of nothing, a real picture. If you notice, most of what they show us is CGIF. They put the fish lens on all the cameras. Why they do that? <laughs> because they shall seek to do what? Change times and laws. I think if you could change time, if you could change people's conception of time, Imagine the magic or the havoc that you can work on people. You know what I mean? You ever wake up and think it's a different day than what it is? It feels like a certain day, but it's not? Yeah. And when you really recognize what day it really is, it, don't you feel like disorientated? It's, 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 it's the weirdest feeling? It's like, it's like, what? Well, how come it felt like, you know what I mean? So that happens to us so-called naturally. But now, suppose somebody else comes along and tells us it's this time and that time, and it's not. But we believe it's that time. So we accept what they're saying. Yeah, that's the time it is. But in actuality, you know what I'm saying? It's not. You know what I mean? In actuality, it, it, it's, it's not. Yeah, you, you know, I was just thinking about the portals again. I'm looking at this picture here, and I'm thinking about the portals, as you were saying. And it's a picture of, you know, that, that arc, the Milky Way arc in the sky? Yeah. It's a picture of a road, and the road is like, is like going like to the infinity perspective. But then you see in the, in the heavens, you see the arc, that, that, that Milky Way, right? And then you see at the far horizon where it looks like the sun just went down. Like the, the, the horizon is like, is like lit. It's like kind of like yellowish, orange, a little... But then you see there's a light on the other side of the picture, too. Almost like it, you would think, is there two suns that went down? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I do think the sun go through portals. I was th When I was looking at this, I, I, that's when the thought came to I. And when you mentioned Enoch again with the portals, I'm thinking about the portals. I think the sun does have these portals because sometimes when the sun is going down and you can watch it with your own eyes or you see a video, like a long playing video, it's like the sun, it's like one moment the sun seems like it's right there. And then almost like if you turn away, you know what I'm saying? If you turn away, yeah, it's like it's, it's like gone. Something. Yeah, it's almost like when the sun is ready to make its, its arc around the next park. I, I believe that the earth has a double arch. You know, like they talk about McDonald's, the double arches. I believe the earth has a double arch, like from the heavens perspective. Like for both sides of the earthly plane, there's two separate arches, 
right? And that when the sun appears to be going down, when the light is going down, it is doing a little like, there's like a little heavenly magic trick. You know what I'm saying? You know, there's a there's a little magic trick going on where it appears, depends on, you know, where you're at on the earthly plane, it appears like where the sun creates its atmosphere, but it kind of like gives the impression because look, if the sun is moving and it's and, and there's a, there's there's a there's an arc, right? Then when the sun is going from one end of the arc, the, 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 the one end of the arc will be rising, right? And it's not just going up and up and up in the air into the arc, but it's kind of going across. But it's using the arc as a as 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 as, as a, a optical illusion, as an optical illusion. You know, they said that, you know, water creates optical illusions, right? Yes. And if the heavens are water, right, and have water element in them, you know what I mean? And we we see how rainbows are. You know how when you see a rainbow go over this way and then go over that way? Even one time I saw a picture of a rainbow where it was like the colors flipped around. You know what I mean? Where on one side the colors were like in this order, like from red going up. And then it's like on the other side, it kind of flipped around in the opposite. You know what I mean? That meant that at the zenith, like at the top of it, something up there must cause like, like the same way we make, we can make arch arches with like, you know, devices and light and mirrors and all that. That is some kind of effect like that as well. You know what I mean? But then when the sun is finished, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of light on a certain zone. You know what I mean? It kind of causes a kind of a a, a a sunset from perspective. But a sunset from perspective over here, if we could somehow run ahead of the sun on the other side, it's now entering into the second arc or it's opening up the next arc. You know what I'm saying? To give this impression, you know, because that's one of the big things people say that, well, if the sun is up there in the sky, right, and the earth is flat, then how is it that, you know, everybody don't see the sun at night? You know what I mean? Based on Enoch and what I've read and what it seems to be saying is that there is a whole machinery that we don't see. You know what I mean? There's a whole machine. I don't mean machine machines, you know what I'm saying? Like physical machines, you know what I mean? But there's a whole like sacred geometry to this. You know, because if you look at geometry and math and man knows how to make certain illusions. We know about mirrors like 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 a house full of mirrors, you know, the mirror house at at the at the at the at the um what was it called? Um like we had this place called Coney Island at the amusement park. Yes. You know, and it can create these optical illusions. You know what I mean? I mean <laughs> You know, and then because the earth is not flat, flat, you know, there are highs and lows. Like when the Bible says, and you'll ride upon the high places of the earth. I began to think, could there be high places like certain continents that are higher than others? You know what I'm saying? That, that when you put it all together, that even if you were at a vantage point, you could not physically see from one end of the earth to the next. You see what I'm saying? Because of the differences of the terrain. You know what I mean? Right. And then th there's water. And there's water below on earth and there's water in heaven. And the water in heaven seems to be of a finer quality. You see what I'm saying? It, it's, just, it's just amazing, man. It's just, it's just a real, you know. <laughs> so, so the Space Shuttle Challenger... Did the space shuttle challenger run into new? You know, they, they call the woman that's that's bent over as an ark in the heavens. They call her new. Did the space shuttle run into her? Well, <laughs> they're trying to get through the through the formament. I I this is just me what I think. I'm trying to convince nobody or nothing. I watching these NASA people for years when they show the training, you know, when they like to put a training on, you know, on news or whatever, they put it on documentary or whatever. And I always see them train in deep 
water. Yeah, why that? Mm -hmm. So if you training to go to space, were you telling me there is no, like no oxygen? No, yeah, no atmosphere, no nothing. No, yeah. no atmosphere, just wide open, nothing. <laughs> why you training in water? Mm, why you training in water? You know, I have understood. When I hear that there is water above the firmament mm. and below. The word. So you trying to get to some place that got water? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know how this water is? is yeah, you know how water is if you jump in a pool and you don't jump in it right. You know, like if you jump in a pool flat, like flat body, it'll oh, break yeah. every bone in your body. You know what I mean? Though the water is soft, like soft can be. You know what I mean? You know, like like if you jump in the pool, right? Don't you have to slice the water? Yeah. You guys, because if you if, if you jump in it and you and, and you jump it flat wise, you know what I mean? It's gonna break your bones. It's like it's like the the same soft water is gonna become hard. I'm looking at on the screen when you just mentioned that I scroll through some of the pics. We have the word in Hebrew rakia, rakia, right? Or the rakia, right? We have rakia, and this is what's translated as the firmament. But here's the definition that's on the screen. Open parenthesis, beaten, right? Then it has metal, like beaten metal, plate, firmament. This is the vault of heaven understood as a solid dome, right? The vault of heaven. So even the word for firmament from the Hebraic sense has the idea of something that was beaten. You know, something like, almost like it was refined. It was beaten, you know what I mean? And that like, like as one would beat metal, right? And it's a plate or a like a vault, but it was understood to be a solid dome. That's why I made made the water example. That if you if you jump into water, and from a height, you should try to slice the water. Like you put your hands together and dive. They call it dive in the water. But if you try to jump in it flat body, you know what I mean. And you hit it wrong, you could break bones. You could even the person could kill themselves. You know what I mean. You know, like sometimes people commit suicide or jumping off a bridge, and they jump off it. You know, when they hit the water, the water is like is like harder than harder can be. Even though you can slice through the water at the right, you know what I mean? It's all about the angle. You know what I mean? What? Well, correct me if I'm wrong here. In some way written there that say um pertaining to the flood that um Jah open up the the windows of heaven. You know, I just was on I was just on a, I had a still of that too, yeah, the windows. So there are windows in heaven, but look at it like this. Which, which, which I would, I, uh, I would put into the portals. Uh, you know, the windows, portals. I look at them as basically the same thing. But look at it like this. You ever see how when they show us maps, the flat one, the Asmodeo, and it shows those maps. You know when they show us those lines on the maps, the longitude and latitude. Yeah. And you see where they cross. They make like little squares. Like for example. If you look at a map of like where we at, right, and they have the longitude and latitude, you notice that from wherever we stand on the earth, we only are seeing a window. I'm just looking at the maps where they have the longitude and latitude and you can see the little like rectangular boxes. That, whenever I look at that, that reminds me of the sense of windows, even though we're looking at it like on the earth view, but from the earth view, they exist in the dome of the heavens. Like different windows, you know what I mean? Different windows where, you know, who knows, you know what I mean? If like in the flood, like it says, those windows were opened. Now, there is a lot of water, right? According to the scripture above. So it only makes sense as when you ask me like the hundred and what, 50 days, <laughs> getting back to the question one, you know what I mean? That the, I had the 150 days. That it took a hundred and about fifty days, and I think it is in the scripture when it talks about like because they do give a time, like according to the Bible, there's a time, you know, when they, you know, it gives an indication of how long they was in there because the water had to kind of drain off. And here's the question: If windows of heaven were open, right, that means extra water came in, right? 
Yes. Than the water that already was already in, you know, the earthly plane. So that means that where did that extra water go to? And how did that extra water change the geography of the earth? I don't know if you heard about what they call Pangea. You heard about Pangea, right? Where all the continents were connected? Yes. You can now, see it. Um, um, like if you put puzzles together, like you could look at that and see that's a puzzle you could put together. Yeah, so this this something interesting that happens in the Noah flood, after the Noah flood, it says, and then there were seasons. Basically, after the Noah flood, according to the Bible, comes in seasons. You know, it comes in these different seasons. You know, like, like let me find the verse right here. Yeah. I meant the water have to go nowhere, you know. The water, uh, the water could still there because how much underground cities, I mean, like underwater cities, they don't find in all these years, they find whole cities and towns underwater. These mm. things could have been here from before them time, there, you know. Because mm. we, we act like we is the only people who could build stuff that look good. True, true, true. You know, building cities that look splendid for centuries. Look at all the reenactment when they reenact um, pictures and things of, of Egypt. You know, you know, like we look at certain places back in them time. We look, there's some beautiful places they show in you. And in and, the reenaction. And also, remember we talked about before, like off of China or somewhere, I, I saw a documentary where they had a lot of great megaliths, like underground buildings that were built. There's um, a sinkhole in China, a big sinkhole. Let me find a whole ecological system underneath the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, like the ground. You know what I'm saying? And then they had a, um, a drought over there to the point where water receded. And then man find stuff that date back to 600 and something AD that people even didn't even know was there. Mm. Uh, and they did, about, they, 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 they did it back to when? <laughs> 600 and something AD. Hmm. So I'm going to be buried that long and you ain't know about it. Mm. Yeah, and that shot at times to, to know why you think something can be underwater from way back when. <laughs> Yeah, but, but a lot of that seems to be before the kingdoms and, and the history we know now, what I'm trying to say. A lot of that appears to be um, before, you know, the history we know now. So could there have been also other ancient where I was meditating this. That, you I know, like you said on a history, so let me go from there again. Yeah, from, from the historical. Okay, I got Genesis 8.22. While the earth remaineth, Seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. It's kind of interesting that that word is mentioned right there, you know, because I don't re recall it speaking about cold before. You know what I mean? I don't recall it mentioning winter. But then think about the effect of having more water in the atmosphere. You know what I mean? If you have more water in the atmosphere, you know how it is. You know, like when the water, you know, the snow, you know. Um, and then also whatever the land was before the flood, if we look at the flood of like, if all the continents were connected, right, at this ancient time, right, before some kind of a deluge or flood, the flood is a natural way for shifting 150 days. I mean, I, I mean we've seen natural disasters happen in less time than that. Yes. You know, that changed the whole look of everything. You know what I mean? I that, exactly. So 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 even the the earth possibly based on what we have here in the scripture and the testimony with with the flood, right, could have reshaped, you know, reshaped the, the land masses. So like what we're talking about before the flood, how the land masses were, and then after the flood, right? Some places were known because some places were known, but the the geo the geography change. You know, like from a biblical perspective, everyone came from the east. So even the Cushites came into Africa and the Hamites into Africa and Ethiopia from the east. 
It's just it's just something I'm looking at this and I say, okay, let's take the narrative as it is with the available like knowledge, archaeology, and what you know what is known, and let's see what they're trying to say. Like, what were the Hebrews, what was Moshe and the Israelite scribes seeking to say by this? It makes a lot of sense, but we have to get out of some of those old misconceptions. You know, like time. You know, like, you know, like, 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 like if they said, like you said about uh, three moons from now, you know, or six sunrises. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That, that, that they, they, they wouldn't have marked it to a particular hour of the day. Now, in the time of Yeshua, when Yeshua says about, know ye not that there are 12 hours in the day. Now, th you have to recognize at this time, this is like what they call the first around after the first century, right, A.D., right? And it was Caesar, Julius Caesar, a couple of years, a couple of decades before that had gone into Egypt, and learned a lot about how the Egyptians calculated time. And he and his scientists or whoever, Magi or, you know, whoever, whoever his particular, you know, they had priests that did similar things for the Romans. They readjusted the calendar. In other words, that the, the Roman, so-called European or the Roman calendar was influenced. Through, you know, Caesar lived about maybe, I think maybe what, 30 to to. No more than a hundred years before, like the time of Christ. So what I'm saying is that they got much better with understanding time. You know what I mean? You know, like with calculating time. By the time we come to the time of Yeshua, you know, because even the the, the use of um, yeah, even the use of like hours, I find that more in the New Testament. You know what I mean? Like the third hour, the fourth hour. I don't find like. In, if, if you come across like in, in Genesis and Noah woke up at the third hour of the day, you know, you don't, you don't say nothing like that. But when we get to like the New Testament times, humanity had already progressed, you know, and people learning from people. You know, that's how we, like even we as children, you see a group of children, they could be different races, nationality, ethnicity. And if they still are at that, at that, at that um, um, innocent level. They'll play together. They'll learn from each other and have no problem with it. You know what I mean? And you know, you know what I'm saying? That's how like humanity was. Because this whole idea about the racial thing, because that's the next one of the points. I don't know if that's one of the questions you had about the, you know, that the I see you had a few questions about the Shem, you know, Ham and Japheth part. Because we haven't got into that that one just yet. <laughs> no, I won't go in there with that one just yet, but... Yeah, but um, yeah, John eleven and nine. If 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 if, if you can note that, uh, you might already have that one there where Yeshua said, "Are there not twelve hours in a day?" And he says, but "If it, the thing is to wait, they trying to convince you of the age of the earth and how long humans been on the earth, right? So called what they call us humans." But if there is a, if you will calculate back to where they first start to calculate time in the way we have time right now, as far as seconds, minutes, hours, days, and we we say you no know, before that time, it was like I said, see you in a couple moons or whatever or whatnot. How you calculate before that time to mm. say how long something going on? Based on their understanding or misunderstanding of time now. Because there had to be a time when this got established. This, this didn't get established day one. True, true, true. Mm -hmm. So if this wasn't established day one, there had to be a time when this became the established known doctrine of how time is amongst people. Just to, to say we could calculate time. Mm. What is the time before that? No man could see that. Mm. Exactly. And so we, when they try to convince me of how long we here or how long humans been here or whatever, 
I can't ride with the, I listen to them, but I can't ride with what they're talking about. Because this is a, a big gap that I see. That you can't fill. Unless you could convince me that from the, can, the, 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 uh, the creation of the first man, that time was established with this man. If you could convince me of that, then your argument win. But unless you could convince me otherwise. No. Mm. There, was a, there was a time when time was not. <laughs> you ever heard that? There was yes. a time when time was not. <laughs> you know what I mean? There was a time when time and when time was not. Truly, truly, truly. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. He made a tent. It's interesting when, when the scripture says that he made a tent for the sun. Like a tent. You know what I mean? You know, could that be where the sun appears to kind of like from perspective to kind of go into the tent but that going into the tent is like going into like a, a portal a door you know and then even enoch i think one of the enochs or in one of the the scripts it speaks about how there's also like an accompaniment the sun is not just moving alone you know what i mean like you know what i mean whether the ancients well we don't see it with our own eyes Yes. But then maybe the ancients didn't see it with their eyes either, but maybe they perceived the reality that we're not able to perceive because we still are living in the lie. You know what I mean? As long as we're living in the lie, how can we see the truth? You know what I'm saying? Like, um, like, like if we're seeing things the way they, 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 they've made us to believe. So, I'm not 100% sure, um, but I think I read this somewhere in the Gnostics um, writings where there's an angel that governs the sun and an angel that governs the moon separately. I don't know if you heard of that. Yeah. No, no, I have. I have. But but once again, if the word angel, remember angel at its root basically means like a messenger and even a message. You know what I'm saying? Because in a yeah. sense, we have angels too, even in us. Notice along. Well, I didn't think. I, I, I think in the Gnostics, I think that, like, I think they actually use guardian or something like that. Well, I know in the Gnostics, yes, and I think also in I want to say one of the Enochs. There's the Ethiopic Enoch, and then there's this other Enoch, the Slavic Enoch. It also kind of points to that, you know, to to that as well. Definitely, yeah, it points to that. Oh wow, I just I just put on the 1986. Remember the Challenger back in 1986 when the Challenger had 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 broke apart? Yeah. Yeah, and the, somebody did a meme here where it kind of shows the Challenger like crashing into the firmament, you know, h hitting this firmament. And when it hit this firmament, you know what I mean? It, it, it basically came down. <laughs> you know, maybe they was trying to think, you know what I'm saying? And the thing didn't work out, but yeah, yeah. When 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 the shuttle the shuttle broke apart, you know, it hit the firmament. You know, because normally even with their rockets, they would go up, and when you get a good picture of it, you see it goes up and go over. About the curve. Yeah, but they try to make us believe when we're watching the TV that it's just going up and up and up. You know what I mean? And then next moment, you know, they're you know they're in outer space. You know, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, the earth before the flood. I found this one here. I, I, I'll try to send it to the eye so I can see this as well, where it shows how the continents were like more all together. At least one example of possibly how the continents were all together. You know, that would make a lot of, um, yeah, that would make a lot of sense. This is one version of it. Not too sure how accurate it is, but yeah, truly, truly the globe model. Now this one is a little better one. This one's a little better one right here, yeah, with the different continents kind of stuck together, you know. But and according to this science, these continents are sitting on 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 plates that shift. So mm. if these plates can shift, I mean, 
If it's, you know, like they don't move already. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me ask you this: a turntable turns, right? <laughs> okay. A turntable, so it's a new mix. And there's another point I want to reason for I, but probably reason this one forward is concerning, um, like from going over the tour and just reading and trying to understand what it's saying, the basic word. I'm beginning to see that way. He planted a garden east of Eden, all right? And he planted this garden someplace. And then he put these two, you could say, this one individual and then brought another individual. But then over here, he created man in his image, male and female, he created them, right? And he blessed them, right? Like on the sixth day. Now, if one thing of the sixth day as like 12 hours, well, probably not too much happened. But if we look at the sixth day as possibly a thousand or in thousands of years, you see what I'm saying? You know, since we know that each day was not as a day as we call day, but a set period of time. Exactly. You know, a, a set period of time, you know. Um, and therefore, if it was a set period of time, just say the day was a thousand years or it could have been 10,000 years, Right. And then humanity that was created originally as image and his likeness, you know, and that image and likeness from a Judaic Hebraic perspective, we often say the ability to um, the ability to speak and, 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 and to, to be rational to speak. But we do see ancient things that are outside of any known ancient humanity that is known to us in a six or seven thousand year period of time. You know, they do find things that clearly display that that beings like humans you know must have done this but they don't appear to be humans connected with our humanity you know you know, like i could see something that that i know a next man did but it's not in my style but i know that another man must have done this you know what i mean because yeah. i can see how it was done so somebody like me or that's a man must have done this you know but i began to think that you know, some people say, well, Adam is the first man. Well, Adam is the same term we use all over for all kind of man. Adam is like the general term for man. You know what I mean? But when we look at the narrative of Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, I don't see them per se to be the same. I see there's a link, but people keep thinking that they're the same. You know, because in Genesis chapter 1, Male and female, he created at the very same time. And he, and he spoke to not him, but to them. But now he, he takes this next man from the afar of the Adama or the dust of the ground in translation, you know what I'm saying? And he places him in this garden that he plants in the east, in the east of Eden. So Eden is a place. But eastward, if we go to the east of Eden, we find a garden. That means if we go to the, the north of Eden, what will we find? If we go to the south of Eden, what do we find? What will we find to the west of Eden? It's like looking at Africa. Ethiopia is in east, right? Is east in Africa, right? He planted a garden eastward <laughs> in Eden. You know what I mean? And he placed the man who he took from someplace else. It doesn't say that the man who he created, people keep mixing up words. It says in King James, he formed him, right? Slash reformed him, right? It, it's just like right now, do we have people who are, are formed? You, you can form somebody, you can inform them, right? I, I can form you, I can inform you, I can reform you. So he formed or informed or reformed this man that he took from some place. See, people keep saying that he created him out of the ground. Nowhere in the text does he does it say that. But he took him from the ground. Now, the ground could be the Adama in the Hebrew, Adama, right? Which could be his mother, like his mother country, or from, from this ground or that ground. You know what I'm saying? But then he says he will send him back to the ground, right? He'll send him back to the ground that he came from. When did he say that? When he kicked him out of the garden that was in the east <laughs> of Eden. People keep saying the garden of Eden and think that the whole garden was called Eden. The garden was not called Eden. The garden was eastward in Eden. Eden was a bigger place. It's like, it seemed like everything was Eden. 
I mean, you, you know, but then we have a garden now. You know what I'm saying? And we know that a garden as a place is a different sort of place. Remember, in that garden, he could freely eat. Food was was it was a beautiful place. Probably smelled good with all the different flowers and that. You know what I'm saying? All that. You know what I mean? That means that when he was kicked out of there, right? When he was kicked out of there, he had to work the hard ground. But what I'm trying to say is that I don't think that he was alone. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that he was he was alone. I think that there was other, you know, and this is a controversial point because people say, well, Adam was the first man. The See, first... Time is the whole time time is the whole thing that is 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 the key factor in all of this, you know, because if one believed in the time frame and mm. of the narrative that is given, mm. then you will have a different look than if somebody looking at it with the time frame them as a way, a way drastic more change of thought than what we know right now because just like we're talking about a garden was planted, right? Mm. Anybody who'd a farm or plant anything, right? Understand that there's a natural order to things, right? And if there's a natural order to things, that means this order was from the beginning because it's just set this order, right? So if just set this hard up and to plant a garden, that means this has to go through the natural order and process of seed planting, mm. germination, mm. you know? Mm. So this thing has to grow and take time to grow over its, its, its natural process of growth before it can bear fruit. True, true, true. Yeah. So, if you he planted a garden in this day, no garden plant in a day. Mm, mm, because mm. there's a natural order to things and it's just at the order. So, just the time frame alone, we have to look at of time itself. Because certain trees take a long time before they build. Mm, mm. And y'all got all the time, to, you know, to, you know, like you know, like to the fullness. Um, but y'all got all the time in the world, right? And out the world too. <laughs> I was thinking about every day being something like of the order of seven thousand years. Even if we just do that, just to work some math, it will make a lot of it will make a lot of sense. You know, even when Cain went to the place called Nod. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's almost the same way that Adam was the first man, but there was more than kind of one Adam. You know, there's more than one Adam in that sense. And the Adam that we're dealing with is the Adam that he brought into the garden. It's almost like how there were all these different nations that were existing back in the days, and then Israel come along. You know what I'm saying? He chose Israel. He, he chose Abraham. You know what I mean? And then he chose this lineage you know what I mean? To be a particular lineage amongst the other peoples. You know what I mean? Even though he created the other peoples too. The other peoples, even according to the scripture, had gone away from his way. But then he found one man, you know what I mean? Who was seeking him. You know, like the a the Abraham, Brahma. You know, he found Brahma, Abrahama. You know, he found Abram, right? And he was seeking him. And then he made a covenant with him, right? To make of his nation. A great nation. This seems to be a pattern. The Almighty seems to work in patterns, like sacred geometry. You know what I'm saying? It seems like he has certain patterns or like certain formulas. You know what I mean? So in the same way that Israel was chosen, right, out of to be a nation, even though Israel was not a nation from a man, then the Adam that we have in Genesis chapter 2 was chosen out of the general Adam, you know, the general man that he had made previously. And no doubt was dwelling in other parts of Eden. Not the garden, but in other places. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise, how could Cain then go ahead and he go to a place called Nod? You know what I mean? You know, and he builds a city. Does somebody build a city for one person? Well, 
wasn't he scared to go to Nara in the first place? Yeah, because you were saying that somebody, there's somebody, I say somebody, we're going to have a church service quickly right here. I say somebody, somebody, <laughs> you know, like, so, he, he was like, somebody going to kill me. He was like, somebody going to kill me over there. When they see me and they find me, they going to kill me. And then what did Yahuwah Elohim say? He said, Xavier Amlak said, listen, listen, I'm going to put a mark on you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So when they see it, when who? You mean you mean Adam and Eve and the other children? Notice how it says that Adam and Eve, right? They had the main characters, the main ones we see the name, right? But then we there's other sons and daughters. Does not say that? That's yes. the part people keep missing that Adam and Eve, they had Cain, they had Abel, they had Seth, but they also had other sons and daughters. Right? But but Cain didn't say that somebody in the family is going to kill me. You know, because he knew that nobody in the family probably would. But he knew that there's these other places that now he's being kicked out of even, you know, the family homestead. <laughs> there's other places where people might kill him. So, so, so Jehovah Elohim didn't say, oh, Adam, I mean, Cain, Cain, there's nobody there. You know what I'm saying? So, so th that, so Adam is the first man, but it's not the Adam that they think. I'm not saying Adam. Adam is the first man in Genesis chapter one, according to the Hebrew, all right? But Adam that we're dealing with is Adam in Genesis chapter two, who was chosen from among the other Adams. <laughs> you know what I mean? To be a separate, because this seems to be the Almighty's plan, where he chooses, like he chose Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, changed Jacob's name to Israel, right? Made this covenant, this promise with them. It's the same thing with Adam. That's where we get the Messiah thing from, is because of what was told to Adam, you know? And you know what? In this time, I got to get that book to the eye, the, um, the, um, what's it? The Gedla Adam, the Gedla Adam. I got to send the eye a fuller copy of that, the, the, um, the book of Adam and Eve, the, the book that was preserved, you know, by the, Israelites of Ethiopia, you know, the book of Adam and Eve. I got to get the eye a copy of that because the eye is going to enjoy that. Definitely. You know, yes, the other one is in the other book. The other one's in the, it has two, like two parts. Half of it is in um, Lost Books of the Bible, Forgotten Books of Eden, you know, but the other half of it, you know, can be found in the Gedla Adam. So I, I, I'll share that. I'll be sure to share that. Bruh. Let me head rest on some of this right here. You know what I mean? Um, but 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 definitely because the eye yeah, there's some reasonments. I gotta I got this head rest. I gotta kinda like let, let it settle. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I didn't even get all of them, but you know how we go already. No, but you wrote it down. I'm I'm I mean but you wrote it down, right? Oh yeah, I got it lock in the lock in the brain, man. That, oh, 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 that oh. one that they that's one that they did for a long time. All right, all right, all right. Definitely, definitely. I, I do want to pick up, do want to pick up on that right there. And this one right here, just adjust vibes. And I think we call this something on time. Got to put this one up on time. Like what time yeah, is right, it? Yeah. What time? What time is it really? Um, just pray for I and I to have a a good suitable title. Like to, you know, throw that up there, share that up there ASAP. But yes, my brother. Um, I have a you know a good a good you know rest and a blessed you know new light you know grand rising you know what I mean. Yes, yes sir. Rastafari. Always guidance and protection. Guidance and protection. Yes, sir. Rastafari. Shalom. Aye. Aye. Aye.